I'm not going to cover the scraping portion of Content Foundry. Uh, we're going to head straight into the Manage section. I have one project, it's called Google. The first thing you should notice is the word count of the scrape. It's important to have a large word count when creating articles because if you're making 50 or 100 at a time, you want each of them to be unique from each other. So this is more than a million words. Uh, typically I use uh, a mix of databases, so that means a database for each keyword. Here there's only one keyword. Uh, usually I use more than one keyword and the total words, you know, I like to aim for about two million words and that makes sure that it's all unique. The next thing we need to look at is the primary keywords. This is more useful if you're creating titles using your keywords and this also determines the anchor text for your links if you don't specify those elsewhere. So your primary keywords should be the words you want to rank for, so these would be exact anchors. Your secondary keywords can be industry related keywords that perhaps you don't want to rank for specifically but they do add variation to your anchor profile. The next section is the link section and it's very important how you specify each of your link lists. You can load them from a file or you can copy and paste them into this box. Now if you look at the list categories you have four options and you'll notice there is no money site option. So the highest level is tier one, so that's the one you want to use for your money site URLs. And for anchor text you can select this. Uh, you always have to select something here so go for primary. So you could just type in your URLs like that and what happens is that when you use the Content Foundry linking options that it will be randomly allocated one of the primary keywords. However, I prefer to specify anchors for each URL that I'm using and this is what I was referring to earlier. You see the primary keywords don't have to be used as the anchors. You can specify the anchors directly in the URL box. On the forum, I released this bot, which creates uh, a Spintax line in Content Foundry's format. And what we have is the URL and then the two pound signs or hash signs, and then domain anchors in different formats, and also a branding one at the end. Obviously, that's in Spintax. So instead of just putting the URL and you can put in the Spintax line, that means that the primary keywords are not used and it will only ever pick one of these as the anchor text for this URL. Uh, I prefer this format at the moment because branding anchors and naked URL anchors are, are really important, especially when you're starting out on a, on a new site. Make sure you're consistent when you're choosing your list categories. Uh, this, this becomes more important as you use different uh, output templates, which is the next thing I'm going to cover. Save that and then close. And then let's look at the output templates. Now I have two for FBN. I have Money Site and T1. Uh, they're actually the same project, but the link settings are different, and I'll show you that now. For the Money Site, Tier 1, I've chosen to have 100% of articles have a Tier 1 link and a min and a max of one and you can also choose a distribution of where it appears in an article and if you're concerned that uh, you're posting to blogs that don't show the whole post on the home page what you can do is you can make the links appear in the top and that means that even if uh, an FBM blog only shows a snippet of 100 or 200 words then the chances are your link will still end up on the home page. I'll just show you the other template I have, T1s and it's basically the same except that it's only using tier 2 links. Now when it says tier 2 what it, what it means is that what you're building with Content Foundry will be the tier 2 so in fact these are tier 1 links uh, that I'm using when it says tier 2 because uh, as I said earlier there is no money site option. Right let's go into some of these other settings for FBN content. If you're bulk uploading you can use images as well and you can also use vid videos I generally don't use Content Foundry for images because it scrapes based on Google settings and if you do a Google image search um, you can ask for medium sized images there is no guarantee that the images you scrape are less than 500 pixels wide which they need to be for FBM posts so 
I have a different method for using images and I've also posted that on the forum. So you have titles, content and links. I've already showed you the links. Uh, titles, you should use title templates because they have that, that creates natural looking titles. You can make it contain the keyword but I don't like to do that because it, it kind of forces um, a word into a sentence which doesn't always look 100% readable. So I say that the title must contain anything. And for uniqueness, I set it to unique to export. Uh, specifying the minimum and maximum length is also useful. I set it to words and put it between 4 and 14. Uh, you can go higher and lower. You know, 5 and 10 would work. Uh, make sure that all your spin settings are off and you don't need word AI. Now for the content itself, make sure that you always select random sentences. This will select random but complete sentences from your content cache. Uh, Markov is actually a sort of random generation method. So while that will make your content more unique, it certainly won't be readable. Even Markov readable is, is not really readable. I also have minimum and maximum word lengths. Uh, for FBN, usually actually it's safer to go with 500 for the minimum. And then I put the maximum at 900. Uh, you can go higher, but if you're using bulk uploads, then that's dependent on file size. So if you want to upload lots of articles, then you need to keep your file sizes down. Uh, so I wouldn't go higher than 900. Uh, looking at some of these other options, I put keyword density down to zero. Um, I wouldn't use a decoy intro because although I previously recommended it, it basically works by taking unaltered portions of other articles which can contain artifacts from the scraping sources. For example, an article site may have their first paragraph as a summary and it says written by an author or it might have the date or the, and the time and those things won't be edited with decoy intro. So turn that off. Uh, we don't support lists in FBN as of version 3.3 uh, nor do we support subheadings so it makes sense to leave those off. Uh, with the spinning everything is off. Uh, we don't allow spinning in FBM, we have no way to pass it out. It's just easier with using Content Foundry just to use it, random sentences, just churn out lots of content and uh, the spinning is not necessary at all. And the output settings which you'll notice is not listed on this side here but don't forget to visit this. Uh, make sure you have it as individual files. Uh, the file template name is uh, not so important and the output format is basically the way that the the code is formatted in the article and I'll show you what this looks like. Here there's a setting settings button if you click that you can see this is my output format for FBM. It's, it's pretty simple it means that paragraphs will be enclosed in P tags and then they'll also have a line break afterwards. Uh, this is what a line break or carriage return looks like in this format. Uh, the same with the title, you've got to make sure that you have the backslash r backslash n because when you're using bulk uploads that's how FBN knows what the title is. It has to be the first line of the text file and then there has to be a proper carriage return afterwards. Uh, make sure you mark up your hyperlinks as well and you'll notice that while most of these do say cf.item.txt uh, for the uh, link it says .url and then even though the colour's not right here you see that most of the changes are in white and here that's still in green but make sure you have that in you know it's just a normal a tag and then with the cf.item.txt in between then close your tag afterwards and that means that you'll get perfect output for FBN uploads so on the site here you can do bulk export and you can export a huge number of articles if you want to. I mean I've done uh, a quarter of a million before uh, when I was generating titles. Because of the way this prompt looks I keep my CF output file on the desktop just so it's much easier to get to from everywhere basically. So I keep a, a folder on the desktop and I suggest you do that too so it just saves you drilling down and then I can't open this folder on this video because it contains all my projects but um, I have a folder for each niche name and then below that I have one for each website and then below that I just 
name the folders after the dates. So it goes desktop, output folder, niche name, website name, and then just the date. Uh, some other notes, when scraping for different keywords, uh, make sure that they're targeted enough that your articles are going to make sense. If you're doing articles and FBN posts for a specific product, for example, HostGator web hosting, then type in HostGator web hosting. Uh, you'll get much fewer results, but those results will be targeted. And then when you pull the random sentences, they will all be on the same topic. Okay, well, hopefully that helps. Uh,